Josh here again, and today's video is on object serialization and how to use and implement it in Java. Enjoy! Java allows you to serialize objects, which is a simpler way of saving objects to a file. When an object is serialized, it is converted into a series of bytes that contain the object's data. If the object is set up properly, even the other objects that it might contain as fields are automatically serialized. The resulting bytes can then be stored to a file for later retrieval. In order for an object to be serialized, its class must implement the serializable interface which is contained in the java.io package and has no methods or fields. Also, remember that if a class contains objects of other classes as fields, these classes must also implement the serializable interface in order for the program to work properly. To write a serialized object to a file, you must use the object output stream, which is used to perform the serialization process. To serialize and write an object to the file, you use the writeObject method, as shown here. The process of reading a serialized object's bytes and constructing an object from them is known as deserialization. To deserialize an object, you use an object input stream object along with a file input stream object. To then read a serialized object from this file, you must use the object input stream's read object method. Notice that you must cast the return value to the desired class type. In this example, I'll be serializing and writing some simple tester objects to a file. The class I'll be using is simply dubbed tester object, and note that I've made it implement the serializable interface. The class has three fields, an integer, a string, and a character. The class also contains a constructor, a getInt method, a getString method, and a getCharacter method. In our main program, I open up the objects.dat file for output, create three new tester objects, and then write each one to the file. Now when we run the program, you can see that it runs with no errors, However, if we try to open up the objects.dat file, you can see that we cannot view it like we would normally be able to view a text file. In the second part of our example, we'll be deserializing the objects we stored in the first part. We start off by opening the file object.dat for input. I then create an array to store each object in. After that, I create a for loop to read in each object and print off the values of its fields. Now, if you remember the information from the first part, you'll notice that all the objects were serialized and stored properly. Well, that wraps up our video. If you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments below. And as always, feel free to subscribe if you'd like to be notified when the next video is posted. Thanks for watching.